Hey there lads and ladies, I am Petrifying Pumpkins and welcome back to PSVR News. We've got some huge bombshells today, so let's just jump right in, starting with the brand new PS5 details that got released today. So yeah, Sony have revealed brand new information about the upcoming PlayStation 5 console, including the fact that yes, it is called a PlayStation 5. I know you might think that's obvious, but it was never confirmed 100% and now it is, we know for sure. Also confirmed is that the PS5 will be releasing in the holiday period of 2020, so you can expect it either in October or November of next year, which isn't that far away. So in an exclusive interview with Wired.com, Sony revealed other interesting details, including the fact that there is ray tracing acceleration in the GPU hardware and that is not a software level fix as some people had feared back when this information first came out back in April. So if you're wondering what ray tracing is, I believe it allows for like some really advanced lighting techniques and technology and it also can be used for audio, implementing audio in new ways in 3D games. And it seems to be a big buzzword for the next generation. Hopefully it's something that's actually worth all this hype that these big companies are putting behind us and not just something that's going to be forgotten about after a year or two. So next Sony went on to talk about the PS5's solid state drive which will offer huge benefits to developers so not only in terms of rapid loading times but it will also free up additional space for developers who'd usually have to implement tricks like duplicating assets and stuff like that so now they can have more freedom when they're designing their games which is of course super exciting for us gamers we're going to see more detailed worlds perhaps and more unique assets in the world rather than copy and paste and stuff like that. So speaking of the storage, the PS5 will allow users to have more control than ever before over how a game installs in their console. Mark Cerny, who is the PS5 system architect, explained how you can install single player only or just multiplayer or delete single player after you've completed this, but keep the multiplayer still on your console if that's what you want to do. And considering that the PS5 will include its games coming on 100 gigabyte size Blu-ray discs, it could be that we'll be needing to juggle these things around fairly quickly as that solid state drive fills up rather rapidly. So the PS5's new user interface was also touched upon. Now the main menu will give you much more info about each game that you have, including information on multiplayer matches being played currently, or maybe if you're playing a single player game, talk about maybe how your next mission, whatever your next mission is, and maybe what rewards you'll get for completeness, stuff like that. It's going to be interesting to see how developers actually use this feature. For example, you can imagine what Firewall could show you what matches are being played maybe and then you click on, okay, I want to join this one and it might just shoot you straight in. That's just an example. Next up, Sony were very eager to talk about the new controller that will be launching with the PS5. So it's likely going to be called a DualShock 5 if Sony is sticking with tradition. Sony had a prototype on hand to show to Wired.com and the first thing Wired author Peter Rubin asked was is that a microphone as he could see a small hole in the controller and also you have this patent up here that showed how Sony's planning on having this like AI assistant built into PS5s perhaps so think of like Alexa or Google Assistant so you're playing your game you get stuck in a certain part maybe a boss fight maybe an enemy you just talk into your controller how do I defeat this enemy and it'll automatically look it up and tell you if you want help you know which is very interesting and you'd wonder if it could be used uh, in exciting ways like maybe Hideo Kojima would go to town on something like that however Mark Cerny was not interested in talking about the microphone just yet he did want to talk about adaptive triggers however which will adjust resistance on the fly depending on what you're doing in the game so the examples they gave were if you're drawing the bow back on a bow and arrow there'll be extra resistance on the trigger so it'll actually feel like you're pulling the bow back well kind of if you know what I mean and another example was that an awesome an automatic rifle would feel pulling the trigger on that would feel way different than pulling the trigger on a shotgun and if we ever do get an aim controller too you would imagine adaptive triggers would be amazing for something like that so the new controller will also feature haptic feedback which is supposedly a huge improvement over the current rumble motors that we have in DualShock 4. So haptic feedback will give us different sensations depending on what is happening in the game. So for example, in Gran Turismo, let's say you take your car over the verge of the track, so half the car is out in the track, the other half is in the rough. Your hands will feel these two different sensations, one of them being smooth, the other one being rough, you would imagine. And all of this stuff just really enhances the immersion, which is, of course, 
key, especially for us PS viewer enthusiasts, this is all music to our ears. So some other details include the new controller using a USB-C instead of micro USB. It will also have a larger capacity battery and thanks to that and the new haptics, it will be heavier than the current DualShock 4. Finally, Bluepoint Games, who are kind of famous at this stage now for making remakes and remasters, including Shadow of the Colossus, which was like one of my favorite games of 2018. Uh, so they're confirmed to be working on a PS5 game. I'm not sure if it's, an ex if it's an exclusive. I assume it is an exclusive. And I also assume it's probably a remake again, maybe Legend of Dragoon or something like that. Uh, not to say that it will have viewer support or whatever, but it's still worth mentioning. It's a very good studio. And so that's all the PS5 news, which is actually a lot to take in. Now, you may be sad that Sony didn't talk anything about VR during this interview. But if you like look at what they're showing, look at all this technology, you can definitely see them applying this stuff to a future PS Viewer hardware, PS Viewer 2 or new controllers or whatever. Like you would imagine the new motion controllers whenever they come out that they would have this haptic feedback just for that extra immersion. And if maybe even the uh, adaptive triggers too, they'd be amazing as well. All this stuff would really enhance PS Viewer if it was used for that. Of course, they're not talking about PS Viewer just yet. They're not ready for that yet. But when they do get there, it might be after launch, I assume they'll have all this stuff in there too. I also found it interesting that when this Wired author was talking about the DualShock 4, he didn't mention anything about the light bar on top. Now that's not to say it is gone, but the fact that he didn't mention this could could point to it being gone. And that if it is gone, that's a sign that Sony are like done with light based tracking, which would also music to our ears, something that we want to get rid of. But of course, I could just be jumping the gun here. Maybe it was there. He just didn't mention it. So that's it for the PS5 news. Let me know down below what you think of all this information. Are you really hyped for this time next year? Are you hyped for the PS5? Are you getting that shit day one? Let me know below. So next up, we have the third anniversary of the PS Viewer, which is coming up on the 13th of October. Now, some of you may remember last year for the second anniversary, Sony revealed Borderlands 2 was coming to PS Viewer. And this year, they've done something similar where they've announced a bunch of PS Viewer news. So I'm just going to read that out. So first up is a game called Bonfire, and that's coming on October 22nd. This title will feature comedian Ali Wong, if that's your thing. And it's going to be about surviving on an alien planet. Now, from the description, it sounds like this one may be more of an interactive story rather than a fully featured game, but keep an eye on us. It's coming out very soon. Next up, we have a release date for Audica, which is Harmonic's upcoming rhythm shooter, and that one's coming on the 5th of November. Paper Beast, which is an exploration slash puzzle game, that's going to be coming in early 2020. Pixel Ripped 1995, which of course we knew was already coming, but now we know it's got a release window of Spring 2020. Also planned for release in Spring of 2020 is The Room, The Or, A Dark Matter. And that's all the news that PlayStation had to announce for the third anniversary. But that's not all, because to help celebrate the third anniversary, PlayStation is doing a sale on both the North American store and the EU store of great PS Viewer titles. So these titles include Skyrim, Super Hoss, Ace Combat 7 and more. And of course that's the from the American store. The EU store is also having a sale to celebrate the anniversary though the discount and the selection of games may vary from the North American store. So I'm going to have a link, two links in the description below to each one so you can check out whichever is applicable to you and you can see if you can get any tasty deals there. Finally, Sony have revealed the top 10 most popular PS Viewer games for both America and Europe. Let's start with America going from most popular to least popular is the Playroom Viewer at number one. Number two is PlayStation Viewer Worlds. Number three, Until Dawn Rush of Blood. Number four, Resident Evil 7, of course. Number five is Skyrim Viewer. Six, Beat Saber. Seven, Job Simulator. Eight, Batman Arkham Viewer. Nine, Super Hot Viewer. And coming in at 10, Call of Duty, Infinite Warfare, Jackal Assault viewer experience. And then over across the pond to here, where I am in Europe, the top 10 was at number one, Playroom viewer, number two, PlayStation viewer Worlds, number three, Resident Evil 7, Biohazard, number four, Until Dawn Rush of Blood, number five, Gran Turismo Sport, number six, Call of Duty, Infinite Warfare, Jackal Assault, number seven, Skyrim, Number eight, Astrobot Rescue Mission. Number nine, Farpoint. And number 10, Drive Club VR. So it's interesting to see some of the differences between the two. There's some different tastes between the two continents. Particularly the mega popular title Beat Saber didn't even make it to the top 10 in Europe. While big PS Viewer exclusives like Farpoint and Astrobot didn't make the top 10 in North America. So it's kind of interesting to see these different things. 
So myself and Decepticon will be going into much more detail on all these topics, plus many more topics, including all the Iron Man stuff we haven't even got to talk about yet, uh, over on our podcast, the PSVR podcast, uh, which is called Touch and Tips. Hopefully we'll get that back up and running soon. Currently experiencing some technical issues, so look forward to that. And before I end this video, let me give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters who are on the screen right now. Thanks to their generosity, this channel can keep improving. And let me give a particular shout out to Crum, Pete Hawkins and Columbus Thomas III, who have pledged their support at the highest tier over on Patreon.com. So thank you very much for your support, gentlemen. Uh, if you want to help them, help me, then uh, you can go to Patreon, which will be in the description below, and pledge if you want. But if you don't want to do this, you can help me out the old-fashioned way with the likes and the sharing and all that usual shite. That's it for me, lads and ladies. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.